Tanse wapinsu pinsu esqueo netis nakason. Hi there, everyone. My name is Sydney Leggett, and my spirit name is White Thunderbird Woman. I am here from Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I just finished my Applied Computer Science and Data Analysis degree with a Bachelor of Honors at the University of Winnipeg. I am a first generation student to graduate university, and in the fall, I'll be starting my next journey going on to McGill to start my Master's of Science in Epidemiology. For today's talk, I will be going over how important programming can be in including Indigenous students in the world of academia and letting them flourish in fields such as STEM. So to start, my interest in university began when I was in high school. For high school, I got the opportunity to join a fully funded private school. And as a student who was extremely studious and always in books, I was extremely excited to get the chance to go to this bigger new school with all kinds of new opportunities. But I was also extremely nervous to be leaving my community within the Seven Oaks School Division and the North End behind. Even though I was only 14 and I didn't really know what the weight of what the word community would mean to me as I continued to grow, I still felt that loss moving from a new to a new space. And in this program, I got the chance to be a part of the model school for high school. And this program gives indigenous youth and inner city youth a chance to go to this school on these scholarships. And being there, I got to meet friends and peers and mentors who understood the backgrounds that we came from and gave us a space to learn the ways of academia and support us through our ups and downs. As I started to become a part of this program, in the beginning, I had no idea how pivotal it would be for my future and for my career. As I started to plan for university, they were a key part in helping me figure out how to apply and support me through getting the grades I needed to get there. When, the time, when it came time to start first year of university, I decided to move away to the University of Victoria. I signed up for the engineering program, I got in, and I felt like I made it. Going away to a new big university in a new city, I felt like everything was set. And as classes started, and I looked around the room, and I was the only female in many of my classes, and I didn't have any of my indigenous peers around me anymore, I felt lost. And as it went on, and as the middle of the semester came, I felt myself falling, failing classes, and feeling like I made a huge mistake signing up for university, and that I was never cut out for this, and that I didn't know what I was thinking. As that came, and it kept going, and I kept spiraling down, and I was walking to class one day, and I passed the first people's house. After passing this place many, many times in that last few months, I finally decided to go in. I went in and smelled the scent of smudge and immediately broke down in tears. There was many people there who took me in, showed me where the counselor's office was, and helped me plan for the future. They helped me discuss why maybe I wasn't doing as well now that I no longer had my academic supports. I was used to being there for me in my previous community to grab me when I fell. And they helped me find a path that I was passionate about and taught me the importance of being passionate about your field in university. They invited me to potlucks and community events and helped me start to build a new community in this new space. And as I began to have that community again, I felt at peace and started to succeed. As the end of that first year came along, I decided it was time to move home. When I came back home for my second year of university in a three-year degree program back at the University of Winnipeg, I felt at peace but also extremely ready to get out of there as soon as I can. All I wanted was my piece of paper, my degree saying I made it, and that I had this success for me and my family. I didn't really care why I was there or what I was doing. 
So as the year went on, I was approached to join the Pathway to Graduate Studies program. I immediately said no, I wasn't interested, I had no view of grad school, I didn't really know what it was, and I didn't think it was a place for me, and I also didn't think I had any place in the research world. They reached out to me again and explained what this program really was, and that it was a space for indigenous students in science to meet each other, to gain friendships, to meet mentors of indigenous students in higher years of university and have the opportunity to learn from them and grow from their mistakes and also to meet professors in our field. I decided to say yes and I applied for the program. When I got into the program, I immediately had a safe space to be in with the indigenous mentors of students who were finishing their honors degree, who were going into masters and doing things I never thought possible for indigenous students from the North End. I never thought it was something that was in my possibility. They taught me all the things and they let me learn from them for classes, to learn from different perspectives and learn at different speeds. And it became a very pivotal point on changing my mindset for university. After that, Going into my third year, we started a science indigenous student group. And from there, we had friends, and we got to meet every single week, and university became more and more of this welcoming place for other indigenous students to be, where we were allowed to take up space, we were allowed to change things to suit us. So with the power of my community behind me, I decided to apply for graduate school. I went on that year to win research awards and feel better and better about myself and why I was in university. As the end of that year came, I got the news that I didn't get into graduate school. My grades weren't high enough, my degree was too short, and I wasn't worth taking a chance on. At the time, I felt crushed. Previously, in university and high school, I was used to downfalls in my academic career. I was used to failing, and I was used to feeling like I wasn't supposed to be there. With this blow, previously, I would have never taken it as well as I did at the time. Instead of feeling tired and like it was time to give up and just get my degree and go into the workforce, I felt like it was my time to fight the system and be there for other indigenous students to make our place in the academic world. So I reached out to my community members and I reached out to other students who were in this situation and I figured out what I could do. From there, I met with many professors tirelessly, bugging every department who would listen to me in the university and made my own degree. I changed my three-year degree that previously wasn't good enough to get into any master's program and made my own four-year honors degree. And with that, I went on to win more research awards and be a part of many internships. And with that, it took me into my final year of university, which was this past year. And in this past year, with the help of a mentor and a good friend from my community, I applied for master's programs again, being scared that I was going to get let down and that even though I built myself up and felt like I was my best self, that if I got declined this time around, I didn't know where to go from there. So we worked tirelessly and went to all the ceremonies together to build ourselves up to feel ready to take on this next step. And after that long year, I got news that I was accepted into masters, that I was going to graduate with my degree, and that I won a scholarship to pay for me to be there, and that they wanted me to be there. I no longer felt like I was fighting my way in everywhere, forcing people to take a chance on me. I felt that I had built a bridge for myself where now I was allowed to enter. And with that, I took on spots to become mentors for other indigenous students and help find indigenous students in universities so that they also can be a part of these communities 
and not get lost in the process. And with that, and following in the footsteps of my good friends, and knowing that not every indigenous student had the opportunities we had, and not every indigenous student has friends in academia, not every indigenous student has family members who have ever been in academia, and not every indigenous student member knows these communities and knows how to be a part of them. So it became very important to me to find ways to make academia more accessible and more welcoming of a place for indigenous students. And no matter any doubts that can be put on indigenous students in academia, whether our grades are too low, our attendance isn't good enough, and there's not enough students in the program, these programs are worth funding because the more the community builds up and the more future mentors that come into place, the more big and welcoming this comes and the more easily we're able to help other indigenous students who are newly coming into academics. So for interruptions, I empower you to, in any level of schooling, whether it's young kids getting them involved in STEM, whether it's middle schoolers or high schoolers preparing for university, whether it's those first year programs that are critical for indigenous students entering and letting them feel like this space is theirs too and that they're not an imposter in those space. I empower you to let those programs exist, build them up, give them time to flourish because after time they will get to that point and more and more amazing indigenous scholars will come. Kinanas and thank you everyone.